Today, I'm doing a comparison video between the Able Carry Max and the Evergood CPL 28. Why am I doing a comparison? Because, well, I'm only gonna keep one of them and I wanted to compare them and see which one I liked better. Now, how am I doing my comparison? Well, I invented and patented, and trademarked and copyrighted a comparison system that I call the 11 C's. The 11 C's are capacity, construction, Comfort, compartments, AKA pockets, computer storage, the cool factor, quality, quirks, cost, the company that makes them, the cons, and we'll end up with my conclusion. That's the 11 C's and 12 if you count conclusion. So why these two bags? Why are these two bags getting the comparison treatment? Well, first off, they are very, very similar bags. They're very similar in their layout. They're very similar in their capacity. They're similar in their price. Both of the companies focus on uh, fit and durability. They're using high-end materials. Neither bag has load lifters. They're both designed to ride up high on your back. Neither one has a hip belt. And both companies have been around just for a few years and they're, they definitely brought their A game. So here's how this is gonna work. I've already got, I've got this one. The Able Carry is packed up and loaded with just about as much as is gonna fit in here. And I wanna unload it so you can see what I got in here and I wanna load it in the Evergoods and see how the Evergoods does with the same loadout. So let's do that real quick. Starting with 16 inch MacBook Pro, iPad Pro 11, charger and a mouse, 32 ounce purest water bottle, Alpaca Tech Case Mini, medicine divider, a notebook, a dot kit, a portable pillow, sunglasses, a big ass peak design, very stuffed, packing cube, and that's it. That's the load. This is all that I could fit into the Able Carry 30 liter pack. Let's throw the dimensions up on the screen. The Able Carry Max is 20.4 by 12.6 by 7.9 inches. They say it can hold 30 liters of storage and it weighs 3.7 pounds. Let's take a look at the Evergoods. It's dimensions, 19.25 by 12.5 by 8 inches. Volume says 28 liters and it weighs 3.48 pounds. So it is very slightly smaller on most dimensions and weighs a little bit less. Let's real quick stuff it full of all this stuff and see how it does. Okay, I just got this loaded up with that same loadout and it definitely all fits in here. In fact, I would say this could hold a little bit more. I could probably slip a few more things in here. It doesn't feel packed quite as tight. So what's very interesting on capacity is that the Evergoods, I think, can hold a little bit more stuff, even though the measured results say differently. I don't feel like my stuff is bulging on the edges of this pack like it did on the Able Carry Max. So when it comes to capacity, the Evergoods bag wins this category. Okay, let's talk about construction. And what I mean by that is the materials and the workmanship that goes into these bags. Let's start with the Able Carry Max. It has a Cordura base, a 1000D Cordura base, and that helps protect the bottom from the, the road. You know, when you take it out and you set it down, the X-Pack material can get a little scratched up, but that's why they put a a Cordura bottom on this bag. I think it was a smart choice. Like I said, it's made of X-Pack. This is an X-Pack 42. This is the green color from Able Carry Max. Other colors are made from slightly different X-Pack material. It has a layer of DWR, uh, water repellent 
coating. This material uh, here on in the strap and on the back is called closed cell foam. It's quite comfortable. It uses YKK zippers, an AquaGuard zipper around the laptop compartment, and it has Duraflex plastic hardware. Those are high quality ingredients, that's for sure. The stitching on this bag seems to be top grade, top notch, high top shelf, whatever you want to call it. It, it just has a feeling of absolutely indestructible stitching. I don't know how they do it or I don't know what they did to achieve that, but that's the feeling I get from, from handling it for a little while. Very durable. The Evergoods CPL 28. It's made from their custom developed 840D ballistic nylon. Oh, and by the way, I should mention this is the version three. It also is covered with a DWR water repellent coating. The interior is a 420D HT nylon with PU coating. The shoulder pads are, are uh, the material called Zote Foam, EV50. I don't you know what that means. Sorry, I don't know what that means. Um, there's a piece of aluminum to keep it, help it keep its shape inside. The zippers are YKK and the hardware is Duraflex. So very similar materials, at least on the hardware and zipper side, but the, 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 fa the main fabric is, is quite different. The Able Carry is made from X-Pack and X-Pack has a reputation of being kind of crinkly. I didn't really find that to be the case with this bag. Uh, it, it doesn't have that quality to me, but it definitely doesn't have the stretch ability that uh, nylon does or Cordura does. It, can, it, it, it doesn't have any give. So if I have to pick a winner out of the category, I will say that it's a tie. Now, the reason I went ahead and give it a tie is because I'm not trying to claim that one is better constructed than the other. That's not really something I'm qualified to talk on. And in my opinion, they both are at the top of their game. The quality and the construction and the materials are amazing and very well done. So uh, I don't want my naive <laughs> decision of category when I hear to influence um, something I don't know a whole lot about, but it, they both have wonderful stitching and construction and materials. So yeah, it's going to be a tie. Okay, let's talk about comfort. This is an important one for me because I try a lot of bags and I have kind of a weird shaped body. So not everything fits me super well and I, and I get picky about comfort. I will say neither one of these two bags is my favorite comfortable, most comfortable carry. They both are designed to ride high up on the back and I prefer a little bit of a lower ride on my back. The Able Carry bag is a little bit more comfortable if I wanna let it down a little bit and let it hang off my back a little further down. This one is more comfortable than the Evergoods for that. Let's talk about something that I don't hear very many people talk about much uh, and that is shoulder strap length. I went ahead and busted out the tape measure and the Able Carry Max shoulder strap length is 17.5 inches. That is a little shorter than what I like. I think 19 inches or 20 inches is a better fit for me. The length of shoulder strap on the Evergoods bag is only 14.5. That is a heck of a lot shorter than the 17. 0.5. The way that that comes into play is when you're wearing the bag, when I'm wearing the bag, and I'm a big guy, I got a big back and I got a big chest. And so when I'm wearing this bag, it puts the part here where you, where you adjust the length of the strap, it puts that right into my armpit. It's right into my armpit. And if the strap is a little longer, then it, it works better for me. It doesn't dig into my armpit. So that three inches from the, from the Able Carry makes a big difference to me. And if it's even longer than that, it's even more comfortable. So for me, the Able Carry is a little bit more comfortable. When there's a laptop in the back, it's very stiff and straight, but it does have this, you can, you can see it here. It does have this curve. It does have this curve. And so what I found is that this curve right here, this part right here, does kind of dig into my lower back a little bit. Now, what's funny is that Evergoods has the reputation of 
the back digging into the lower back. But I found that to be a more significant problem here on the Able Carry Max. It's not that bad. It's not too bothersome, but it is the part that I notice the most, and it kind of bulges and pushes into my lower back. So that's not super comfortable, but it's tolerable. And also when there's a laptop in the back, it does feel a little bit like a stiff board. I don't feel like the bag hugs, hugs my back. Not very many bags that put the laptop right up against your back do. So it's not a, it's not a problem I know how to solve. It's just a note, it's just an observation. But I do think it's overall, I think this is a comfortable bag to carry around. And I think the straps are padded and comfortable. Let's talk a little bit about the Evergoods bag. This is the version three and it's got the upgraded back panel, but it's a very slick material. It's very slick. And so what I found is I found it has a tendency to slide off my shoulders, especially if I'm wearing a jacket that's kind of a slick jacket. The, the slick on slick just causes the shoulder straps to, to, to get wider and the backpack kind of just feels like it's pulling my shoulders back like this. And I didn't find that to be terribly great. On top of the fact that the shoulder straps are really short. And so these, they're just, it's kind of pulling back on my back a little bit. And because I'm a big guy, I had a little more trouble getting it to cinch up really well. And if I did that, then I felt like it was riding super high up on my back. And I don't like carrying the bag up that high. I mean, I'll admit, I think that might be the healthier way to carry a bag. So I'm not, I'm not saying that I think my way is the better way. I'm trying to say that I like the way I carry it a little lower and this bag likes to be up high. So it's a little bit of a, maybe an incompatibility with the way I like things. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm, I'm, I'm probably wrong, but it is what it is, right? Individuals like what they like. Your mileage may vary. With that being said, if I have to pick a winner out of these two for this category of comfort, I'm picking the Able Carry. It's due to the strap length. Strap length. Let's talk. Let's be real. Slightly longer straps are, are better for me. Okay, let's talk about compartments, aka pockets. Each bag. It, it's actually a very similar layout. They both have this front front zipper, quick access front zipper with some internal organization. They both have a clamshell design with a big kind of open dump pocket in the, in the middle. They both have a pocket up here and a pocket here. They have similar pockets for laptop storage. Although the Evergoods is accessible only from the side and the Able Carry is mostly accessible from the top. Uh, the Evergoods has a zipper pocket up at the top on the near the back. The, this one also has a, a zipper here in the top, but it is inside the laptop compartment. Um, they both can hold a, an iPad in the computer area. We'll get into the computer area separately later. Um, one of the key differences in these two bags is that the Evergoods does not have a water bottle pocket. The Able Carry has a really good water bottle pocket. The water bottle pocket here is, is zippable. And if you're not using it as a water bottle pocket, it, it's hardly noticeable. It keeps, it's, it helps keep the profile very slim. And the, the downside to that is that when you have a water bottle in here, it actually takes up some of the volume, a fair bit of the volume from the inside. So it decreases how much you can fit inside the pack, but it is a generously sized pocket. It can hold a, a, a big water bottle. This is the, this is the purest water bottle. Uh, the, the brand is purest. And I like this one because it has a glass lining on the inside, which actually helps keep the water tasting fresh. It doesn't get that me metallic, taste that other water bottles can give off. But it's a fairly chunky water bottle. Um, but it, it actually fits in here quite easily. You can see that there's still some height left and there's still, there's, I mean, it could fit a bigger water bottle as well. And even when it's 
it's hard to tell that it's in there because again, a lot of that space is from the inside. So having a, a, a nicely designed and spacious water bottle pocket is a pretty big advantage when we're comparing these two bags because the Evergoods does not have a water bottle pocket. You gotta put your water bottle on the inside. Now, for a lot of people, they don't care. They're like, ah, fine, I'll put the water bottle on the inside. I don't want an external water bottle pocket. For me, I, want a, I drink a lot of water. I want a water bottle pocket that's easy and accessible, and I don't want the risk of the water being in with all my other stuff. It just, it, it's accident, it's an accident waiting to happen. Just a little bit of a leak, and it, and it has happened uh, to me and to my wife and to other people. The, 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 the lid's not on quite tight, or it just kind of, the water seeps out or something like that, so it does happen and I'd rather it be an external pocket. So that's my thing about water bottle pockets. Now, real quick while we're on the idea of pockets, if you wanted to use this water bottle pocket that zips up as some other quick stash, maybe sunglasses or some other item, you don't have to zip it up. A little tiny tripod, um, being able to lash it to these lash points, something like that, that works too. But there's another water bottle pocket, or a mesh pocket in here anyway, that uh that you can put you can put stuff in now i okay i jam you just saw me i just jammed that thing in there it is as tight as it's i mean it fits it does fit but man it's really pushing on the outside of this um it's really pushing on the outside here so this is probably a little bit too big of a water bottle for that pocket and i don't even it doesn't even want to come out of there <sighs> So I think that was a good test to see this pocket, but this is for uh, maybe you put your sunglasses in here or something like that. On the flip side of that, there is a sort of a backwards facing pocket here that has two zippers, a zipper up and a zip down. And it has a key ring. It's actually a removable key ring. We'll talk about this key ring in a little bit. Um, but inside of this pocket, are some lash points. It's pretty hard to see. I'm doing a terrible job here. Um, but you can see that the, the pocket has a little bit of space for, um, and it goes all the way down. So it's just got that external pocket. Okay, those are the pockets on this guy. The pockets here, it has a much larger front zip pocket uh, with, some, with some organization. And it's got, big pockets on the flap. This is a much larger mesh and a much larger pocket up here. And it's got something that the Able Carry does not, which is a mesh pocket here for something like paperwork or another computer or an iPad or, or something flat in this pocket, which is a nice bonus. And lastly, uh, we're looking at this pocket up top, which is a pretty spacious pocket and out of the way when you're wearing the bag, it's way up top. So it, does, it doesn't actually get in the way. You can fit quite a bit of stuff up in here. So it's just kind of a quick access top pocket. And that's a good pocket up there. If I have to pick a winner out of compartments category, I'm gonna pick the Able Carry. And it's due to that water bottle pocket. Ultimately, they have a very similar layout and I like how generous the Evergoods pockets are, they are bigger and they don't feel quite as tight. These are tighter pockets, that's for sure, but this is a really nice water bottle pocket and I think overall that puts this one ahead in the category of compartments. Okay, quickly looking at the computer pockets, um, the Able Carry has an interesting thing going on where the, the, the computer pocket does not go all the way down on both sides, it goes partially down on one side and a lot further down on the other, which makes kind of a, a access just a little bit more difficult. I'm not even gonna say it's hard, but it's a little more it's a little more difficult. There is a designated laptop pocket here, a designated sort of an iPad pocket here, but it's kind of a shallow pocket. I don't know really know. The iPad sticks up pretty high and it creates kind of a weird situation. I'll show you that in B-roll. But uh but then there's more space in in this 
pocket for other items, other large flat items like papers or whatnot. And it's nice that there's a the zipper pocket up here at the top of the laptop area, which you can fit, you know, you can put your charger and mouse and USB dongles and cords and all that stuff up here in this organized pocket up top. It's nice that they're all together. You uh, unzip where your laptop is and you have access to your peripherals. I think that's pretty nice. The Evergoods doesn't have it quite so organized. You're, you can have your stuff over in different pockets. I wanna show you a, a, a secret pocket that the Able Carry has, and it's actually inside of the computer uh, laptop zippered pocket. And it's actually this, this zippered area back here on the back. This is uh, access to the frame sheet. It's got a plastic frame sheet in here to help keep, give the back some stability. And um, if you unzip, if you unzip that, you have access to your, your frame sheet and you can take it out if you want. Um, but secretly, right inside here, against this flap, there is a little tiny Velcro pocket that you can access right there. And that's really perfectly sized for a passport. Maybe you put some cash in there, maybe you put your passport or some travel documents of some other type. You put those in there, Velcro it up, zip that back up. And the chances of anybody ever finding that is very slim. Maybe an air tag can go in there, but, um, but that's a cleverly hid pocket. One of the most well hidden pockets of any bag I've seen. All right, let's look at the, let's look at the laptop computer pocket here on the Evergoods. And I do have the iPad in here and I do have the laptop in here. Let's get those out of there. 16 inch laptop, both bags hold big computers, so like up to 17 inches. What's funny is that um, Evergoods, they, on their website for this bag, they say that it holds some smaller 17 inch devices. So they're not saying it holds every 17 inch device that exists, but they're saying if you got a smaller 17 inch device that it will fit. So where you make that determination is up to you. But what's interesting about this compartment on the Evergoods is actually quite big. It, it's quite spacious, uh, meaning depth-wise. So even after you put your laptop in there, even after you put the iPad in there, you still have quite a bit of depth. And I think that's really great for something like an a, a, a external travel monitor, which I've been starting to travel with a little bit. So, uh, the, the laptop compartment on this Evergoods bag, when we look right here, you can see that there is an inch of, at least an inch, probably more like an inch and a half, of designated width or depth for just the laptop compartment. And I think that is, overall, that's pretty good. But it, it, it does add to the weight of the bag, and it, it makes this section for this main compartment, not as deep. So if I got to pick a winner of which backpack has the better computer storage area, I am going to pick the Evergoods. The Evergoods wins with computer storage pockets. Okay, this is a totally subjective category, but it's called the cool factor. Which one of these bags has better cool factor? And what that really means is uh, just kind of like what it sounds like. What's, what's cool about each bag? Let's talk a little bit about this Able Carry Max. Now, if you've seen my channel before or you know if you follow me or you've seen these videos, I just did a Ultimate Tech Pouch Roundup video and I did awards and I gave this Alpaca Tech Case Mini, I gave this the award called Sexiest Tech Pouch. Now I want you to look at these two together. I want you to make the comparison here. They look identical. They look like they're set born together. And so how can I give this the sexiest tech pouch and not like give this the sexiest backpack? I think this looks, I think the color combo, the green and the black and the X-Pack and the slim, I mean, it's just slim and it's just tight, the seams are tight, the lines are tight. Um, this 
this uh, asymmetrical diagonal, slightly diagonal zippered pocket here is, is drawing attention to itself. And this whole bag, I think in subtle ways, is trying to draw some attention to itself from its shape to the lines, to the webbing that's placed here in accent color, to uh, the way that they've made the A-frame bottom. I know that's a support to help it stand up, um, but they've just done a lot to draw subtle attention to the design of this bag. And I think it works, I think it looks great. But drawing attention to itself is the opposite of what Evergoods does. I think Evergoods is trying to make a bag that does not draw attention to itself. I think they're trying to make a minimalist aesthetic. It still looks good, but they, they don't even put their own branding on here. They have a, a logo here at the bottom, but it's a Velcro receiver area, so you can put your patches on there. So quite literally, you stick your own patch on there, and there is no other branding on this bag. And I will say, I think that's really cool. I think it's, it, it shows that these guys have utmost confidence that the bag speaks for itself. It doesn't need a big ass brand logo on there. And I think that's cool. I think it's ballsy and I, I admire it a lot. So I think that has a very cool factor right there. And the patch, I don't do the patches. I don't like to, I don't put the patches on my bags whenever they have the spot, I just, I'm not into it. But I think it's cool that people can customize their bag and express themselves. I'm all in favor of it. It's just not something I practice. So I think that itself is cool too. So I think it's got some cool, cool factor going as well when it comes to this bag. Now Evergood, Evergoods is uh, doing pretty well among bag enthusiasts. They are growing rapidly as a brand and a lot of people love Evergoods products. I have a bunch of Evergoods products and I'm a fan of the brand as well. This particular bag, um, the form factor is one of their most popular form factors. The CPL, uh, the, the Civic Panel Loader, is very popular. And so it's got a, a appeal. It's got a very strong appeal. And I think these handles, this handle, just this being able to carry it like that, this big ass long handle, that's pretty cool. So it's got some, while being kind of design forward, um, it, it still is aiming to be, it's not trying to draw a lot of attention to itself. It's trying to be very functional and let the design work and not just design for design's sake. And so I admire that about them. I would argue that this bag isn't really meant to be noticed. It's just kind of meant to be a quiet workhorse and it does that job very well and it doesn't ask for attention. And that's a very good thing, but not in this category. This is the cool factor category. And so for that, I'm gonna declare the Able Carry Max as the winner in cool factor. And just, I think it just looks fantastic. So that's why. Okay, let's talk quality. Both of these companies offer a lifetime warranty on their products. The text from the website regarding the Able Carry says, Able Carry bags are guaranteed against workmanship defects for life. If you have product issues, get in touch and we'll sort it out. The text on the website for Evergood says, items with defects and materials and workmanship will be replaced or repaired at our discretion for the practical lifetime of the product. So both, both say lifetime warranty and both say if you're gonna, if it messes up, send it to us. We'll, we'll either, we'll, we'll, we'll get you, we'll set you straight. Um, I didn't have any issues with either of these bags while they were in my, uh, you know, being used by me. Of course, I haven't had them very long, and I'm not putting them through massive testing, or I'm not trying to tear them up. So, I'm trying to take good care of them, um, and so I'm, I'm, I don't have a way of saying, you know. I haven't done an exchange, I haven't done a repair, I can't speak to that, but I will say both of these bags from a quality perspective are at the top of the game. You'd have a hard time finding higher quality bags. At least, I mean, you know, you're gonna find some in the same tier, but finding one that's higher quality, I don't think so.
So for that, I'm going to give them another tie. And I don't like giving ties, but when it comes to certain things, it's just the right answer. Okay, moving on to the next category. Let's call these quirks. Quirks on uh, quirks. What that means to me is that these are the little things that make a bag unique. They're not negatives. Quirks are not negatives. They're just unique things about each bag. So don't be don't be a hater. This bag, the the Able Carry Max has lash points all over the place, including inside the main compartment. There's, I mean, they just covered this thing with lash points all over the place. Uh, I read in somebody's review somewhere that there's 50 lash points in this bag. So if you, you've got to hook something on the outside or on the inside, there's lash points everywhere. So that's kind of quirky, I guess. I talked about this key ring that was, it's removable and it's, it's relocatable. And so inside, inside um, this pocket, you can see there are other lash points. You can move that to the front. There are lash points inside inside this front pocket too. So you can move that key ring, key, key string over to the front, or you can even put it in the main compartment or hook it on the outside here. You can basically just hook this wherever you want. And I think that's clever to, be, to provide a removable uh, key lash point, key, key ring, or you know, put your water bottle on there, put something lightweight on there, um, something you need to keep track of, and have it on the outside. So I think that's pretty cool. I think it's a unique little uh, smart addition. Okay, one of the cool things, one of the quirky little cool things is that here on these shoulder straps, uh, they actually put the X-Pack material over part of it. And I think that helps tie the front and the back together. But what's hidden underneath this pocket is like, it's, it's not really a pocket, but it's like that is a place where you can store the, the sternum strap on each side. So it's, it's a hideable and stowable sternum strap. And it's a protection uh, the X-Pack is protecting the shoulder straps. And I think I haven't seen that before, so it's pretty unique. It's also a, a, just a magnetic attachment for the sternum strap. And I think that's pretty cool. I guess it's, it's I've, heard, I've heard some people say that it, uh, it can be a little bit of a pain to take on and off, but I haven't had that trouble. Okay, one other pretty interesting little quirk on this bag is throughout the bag in, in places where some significant stitching is needed, they... They've done these little trapezoid stitches. Um, and it's, it's just kind of unique looking. It's just kind of cool. You'll see them throughout the bag in, in different spots. Um, just these little trapezoidal, trapezoid stitch patterns. And haven't seen anything else like that. It's just kind of a little design surprise. And I think it's cool. So it's a nice little quirk. All right, let's talk about Evergood's CPL28 quirks. You can put your hydration bladder inside the, the laptop area in here and then run your hose up and out of the top and into the top of the shoulder strap and it can come through and it can come out right here. And then you have your, your straw that you can drink from right here. And I think that's a real clever way that they added, the, they added that into the design. Instead of just having a hole in the top of the bag you know, that's the lazy way to design something. They came up with something much more clever, which is to have it come through and out through the, uh, through the, through the shoulder strap design. Now I've seen, when we talk about hideable sternum straps, these are removable, but I've, I've seen people come up with some solutions that allow you to, to tuck and run a, 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 a system where you can stick this side of the sternum strap up and, and clip it in underneath this uh, underneath this this same area that you would access the the straw from. So I think there's people coming up with ways of doing that, but having a built-in way of hiding the sternum strap if you don't need it is great. But also both are removable. So if you're not a sternum strap person, just take them off, problem solved. So they've got some lash points that are more seamlessly blended here on the at each end of the handle. So there's a couple places where you can 
where you can lash your th extra items to your carabiners and whatnot. But it's, it's not nearly as much as on the Able Carry, but they are more seamlessly blended. It's just kind of a, a smooth, a smooth way of adding them to the, to the exterior of a, of a very stylish and minimal exterior. We already talked about it, but one of the quirks, one of the quirks that I think is unique and cool is, is this logo and, and patch area. I'm not going to say it all again, but I think that is a nice little quirk. And I think just the way that they design these shoulder straps, uh, I think it's, it's really interesting and innovative what they did here to create this kind of seamless shoulder strap flow. Uh, I, I don't know if I like it better, but I do think it's really like design wise, it's really design forward and clever. It's really an interesting, um, approach that they've come up with here. So those are some of the quirks. Let's, let's crown a winner of the quirks category. And I'm just going to go ahead and say the able carry has the winner for quirks. Although it's, it's a close one. We're moving on to another category. This is the cost category and I'm not going to spend much time on this, but the cost category, this is at the time of recording. I have the most current prices, but it does change. It goes up, it goes up, it goes up, it goes up. I haven't seen them really come down. Hopefully they come down in the future, but basically due to inflation, prices generally go up. So I'm not saying these are the forever prices. And in fact, when it comes down to affiliate marketing, the, uh, they don't really like it when you talk about prices all that much anyway. So Amazon especially hates it. So um, I'm just going to say that, that they are very similarly priced. When I went to take my notes for this, the Able Carry was uh, priced at $278 in American dollars. And the Evergoods CPL 28 was Two ninety nine in American dollars. If we got a crown of winner, well, Able Carry wins this category as well. Okay, so this category is called company, and it has nothing to do with the bags themselves. But when you're spending your money, I think you should take into consideration who you're giving it to, and you can devote with your your dollars as far as the values that you support. I like a company that that has sustainability as one of their uh, main tenants. Um, but I also think value is important. So let's talk about uh, the companies and what they, uh, what they represent. Now, Able Carry, they've been around uh, for a few years now, and they came out strong with some cool bags. Um, but when I went to go look on their website, I could not find much about the company or the people behind the company or what they are really all about. Um, they just don't publish that much about themselves. So I just don't know, I don't know very much about Able Carry as a company. I don't really know anything beyond what's on their website that just says they stand for fit and durability, which is good. Um, but there's, there's no faces, there's no people's names, there's no like founder stories or, 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 or legitimate origin stories or anything like that. Um, I know they're based in Hong Kong. That's about all I know. Compare that to Evergoods. Evergoods, uh based in Bozeman, Montana in the USA. And we know the they publish a heck of a lot of material about their origin story, how they founded, where the, the two founders, where they got their experience designing bags from, and what they hold dear to them as designers and business people and what they're trying to do. There's a lot of blog posts and videos about why they make the choices they make. They're very transparent about why they're making the choices and choosing the fabrics and choosing the design things that they that they're trying to do and they're very transparent in their emails about like this is when this package is these are when these things are arriving in our warehouse and this is what we're doing and these are the cool things we're developing and um and they're very transparent and very upfront at least they seem to be i mean all that could be lies i don't have any personal insight into what's going on i'm just trusting that what they say is the truth and that, that might not be the case but they're out there putting information out, which is not, the, not, it's not what every company does. For example, Able Carry, they're not putting out a bunch of company information about like, here's why we designed it this way. Here's behind the scenes. Here's the founder of the company explaining the vision. It's just not there. Evergoods has a commitment to sustainability. They value sustainability. They work hard to create innovative, sustainable designs and, and create processes that are uh, better for the environment. And I value that and support that a whole lot. It's one of the reasons I like Evergoods as a company. And it's easy for me to support them and give them um, my money. 
I have many of their products and I, and I, I really like them and support them. I think they're smart. They're smart marketers. They're smart designers. They're innovative and they have the similar values that I do. So I like Evergoods and clearly when it comes to company, Evergoods is the winner of this category. Okay, let's talk about the cons. Let's talk about the cons of this Able Carry Max. I've had a tough time getting the Able Carry Max to stand up on its own. It depends on how it's packed. Sometimes it does it, but it's just kind of built in a way that it leans. And a lot of, you know, it's standing up on its own fine. But when I've got stuff in there, uh, it tends to fall over. And so I really prefer a bag that stands up on its own. Um, like if you're standing in line somewhere and you want to set it on the ground. Uh, I don't want to have to have it leaning against my leg. I'm a photographer also, so I stop and take pictures a lot of times. And sometimes I just want to set the bag down and, you know, go take a picture. I don't want the bag to fall into the rain-soaked wet road or grass or mud or, or just lie on the dirty airport floor or whatever. So, um, it, it, it's, some people ha can get it to stand up. It depends on how you pack it. I've had trouble getting it to stand up. That's a con. The, the shape of it, it's definitely a bit rounded. It's, it's more round than it is square. And that's a design, it's purposeful in its design. And I think that's a little bit why it has that slightly less capacity um, than it seems like it would. But it, it definitely tapers in, it tapers in here. And I think that's part of why um, it has a little bit of trouble standing is because it's very rounded on the bottom. But also when you're wearing it, it looks a little, it looks rounded. It looks like a, an oval. It definitely has an oval shape to it when, it, when it's being worn. And uh, when it's round like that, I feel like the comparisons to feeling like it's like a turtle shell or, or the, the comparisons are there. It's not that bad, but the more round it is, the more it feels like you're wearing a, a turtle shell on your back. Okay, so here's another big con I have with this bag is that I actually don't think that this front pocket is designed or well, it's not well thought out. It's not a well thought out pocket. I think there could be some improvements in the next version. It doesn't open all the way for one. So your access port here is not all that big. On the inside, it has these vertically oriented mesh pouch pockets here, but they're pretty hard to, to get into or if you have something you want to put into it because the distance between here and here where you're trying to get it in there is not that high. You don't have all that much room to stick something in there and then get to get it to go in and turn and access. It's just kind of tricky. So I don't feel like that vertical orientation is necessarily the best uh, usage of those mesh pockets. I think it might be a little better, like what they do in the Evergoods bag, is to have those oriented the other direction. Those, these mesh pockets could be oriented uh, horizontally when your bag is being swung around. Now also what happens is you put something in here and it falls down. So for example, this pouch that I talked about, I put it in, it falls to the bottom, we zip that up. Now what happens is that that item is down here in the bottom of this pocket. But as you notice, the, 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 it's not a full hundred percent clamshell. So now what we have, is we have a situation where this pocket, where, I'm sorry, where this opening, I have a, a real, we get a situation like that, where the items in this front pocket don't allow, it, it's not gonna bend right here. There's not a natural spot for this thing to, to bend and open up completely. Now, watch what happens if I, so what I've done is I've pulled this, Let's just take it out. So now all I did is take out what's in that pocket and now that opens up like it's supposed to. So the solution I think would be to insert an artificial bottom or make the, the bottom of this where you can't put anything down there in the bottom so it doesn't get in the way of the fold or, and it's probably not gonna happen, but make it a full clamshell open. One of the two solutions, because as of now, with gravity the way gravity is, all the things in this pocket fall down and make it, they make it do that. And you can see that on the inside, they even thought about that because this, this interior mesh pocket doesn't go all the way, it doesn't go past this point. So whatever you got in this pocket won't go past that, creating that. It's just in this exterior pocket right here. So that's a big con of this bag. 
another con of this bag is actually this this laptop compartment is uh, it's kind of awkward. It's kind of weird and hard to it's harder than it ought to be to get your laptop in and out of there. And the way that this laptop pocket is kind of uh, the iPad pocket is in here, it's kind of weird. It's just kind of it's a strange it's a strange solution for how they did this. It's not so bad, but it's kind of a weird one. Um, it's it's a little tight for for all the things for the for the computer, the iPad, um, and this sort of not fully symmetrical zipper area. It's just kind of a weird, um, it's a weirdish design. I don't fully understand it, but it makes it a little tight. It's tight for all the things. Moving on to the cons of the Evergoods bag. These are pretty big, these are pretty big cons, unfortunately. Um, I think the straps are too short. As we talked about in that section of the video, the straps are too short. They're uncomfortable. They hit my armpit in the wrong spot. It rides a little high for my liking um, to get, they like, you know, they, they tell you to cinch it up tight and high up on your back. And I just don't like carrying it that high. Um, so that's a con for me for it to be comfortable. The straps, they kind of slide off my shoulder a little bit when it's especially, you know, when I'm wearing a jacket that's kind of slick, the, the straps just kind of keep going outward and outward. Um, so yeah, the sternum strap helps with that, but I don't feel like you should have to wear a sternum strap in order to keep the backpack from falling off your back, right? Um, the other thing is the, I think the laptop compartment is, is good. It, if you're not carrying, you know, a whole, like a big laptop and or an external monitor and a big computer, I think that the laptop compartment is a little too big. Um, it can be too spacious. It takes up some of the interior room you might want. So it depends on your scenario. You might think the laptop compartment's great, or you might think it's a little too big and it depends on what all you're carrying. So that can be a con. Now that we've got all that out of the way, we've done this comparison. We've compared the 11 C's. Now it's time for the last one. It's called the conclusion. Which bag am I going to sell and which bag am I going to keep? If you're keeping score at home, you might have already figured it out, but I think the Able Carry is the winner. I'm going to sell the Evergood CPL 28. I'm going to let it go to a new home that maybe can give it more love and take it on adventures and give it the love it deserves. Now, with that in mind, I already have I have the Evergood's CHZ 26. I have the Evergood's CTB 35. I have the Evergood's TD35 in waxed canvas, and I have several of the Evergoods Cap 2 pouches. I love Evergoods. I'm not hating on the brand. I'm just choosing, if I have to compare these two bags that are very similar, I'm choosing the Able Carry Max because I think it looks cool, and I already have a bunch of Evergoods products, so I'm going to, I think the water bottle pocket is the, is really the, 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 the thing that close the deal, right? Um, I love this bag. I think it's smart, but I want, a, I want a water bottle pocket that's accessible on the outside. So even though this one is a little smaller and a little tighter and a little weirder overall, this is the one I get to keep. This is the one that's going to get into the, the mix and make the rotation. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of this comparison, the, the 11 C's, uh, is this a good way of doing it? Did I miss anything? Do you like it? What should, what else should I compare? Do you have any ideas for other C words that I should compare? Um, what did, out of these two bags, which one did you pick? Which one would you pick? Which one did you pick? Now there's a huge amount of Evergoods fans out there. Do you think that I'm crazy? Am I making the wrong choice? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. And lastly, watch this video here. If you're curious why the CHC 26 found its way into my permanent rotation. Catch you guys on the next one.